Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a quick example of how to do a controlled experiment. This is how you're going to want to set up your scientific method experiment for the science fair. All right, so you have your laboratory notebook. You've done some brainstorming about what kind of thing you want to do. And for this example, we are going to talk about mint. Does mint really cool things down? In this case, we're using mint candies. It feels like it cools things down, but let's do a scientific controlled experiment to see if it really does cool things down. So first I'm gonna do some research and I'm gonna find out what I can find out about the chemistry of mint. And then I'm going to make a hypothesis whether or not I think that mint really cools things down or not. And then I'm gonna set up a procedure so that I can do a controlled experiment. That means I'm gonna make everything the same and only change one variable, which will be the mint. So I've got several of the exact same size cups and I've written numbers on them. So I will know exactly which is which. Then I'm going to get exactly the same amount of the same temperature water to go into each cup. So I do that for each cup. Then I've got some mint candies that I'm going to use. And this is the variable. So on the first cup, I would only have water. In the second cup, I might put in one mint candy. So unwrap it and put it into the water. Then the second cup might get two candies, the third cup, three candies, and so on. Then I wanna take however I'm gonna be measuring the temperature of the water. In this case, I have an electronic thermometer, but you could use any kind of thermometer. So then this one's gonna go into the water after a certain amount of time, and we're going to record in our laboratory notebook what the temperature of the water is. So we do it for the one that has no mint in it, and then we do it for the one that has one mint, two mints, three mints, four mints, and then record it all so later you'll be able to make a graph. Then one of the important things for a controlled experiment is that you do it again because you don't want it to be just a fluke of your thermometer or a fluke of air quality for the day that um, one of these went down or one of them went up. Uh, rather than it being consistent results. So we'd throw that all away. We would come back, use the same cups, same idea, same water, temperature of water, amount of mints, measure it all again, and you wanna do it about three times. Then you're gonna take all that data that you wrote in your laboratory notebook, and you're gonna start analyzing the results using a graph and then you can draw conclusions about whether the temperature of the water went up when there was more mint in the water or if it stayed the same. And then you decide if your hypothesis was correct or if it was not correct. So the most important thing about using the scientific method for your science fair experiment is that you do have this controlled experiment going on. A lot of people try and do what's called model experiments for science fairs things like uh, making a volcano. And that's great for learning about volcanoes, but it's not a controlled experiment unless you modify it in some way, like making a volcano of different heights to see if that'll change how the explosion goes off. Or if you change the, the hole, if you're using the baking soda and vinegar experiment to make the explosion go off in a volcano, you could change the hole and see if that makes a difference. That would be more of a controlled experiment. Or let's say you wanna make some slime, that's always fun. In that case, instead of just making slime, you would want to change one of the variables in slime, like maybe the borax solution, and see if it changed the consistency of the end product once you have several batches. So that would be a way to change some of those fun model experiments into actual controlled variable science experiments to use for science fair. All right, go have fun. Thanks.